Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about the clutch pedal. And this is the third and final video in the adjustments series. Now this is going to be a shorter video because we're not going to cover uh, some of the adjustments. Now if you want to find out how to make adjustments like the, uh, the pedal face or the tension or the potentiometer or the bump stop, uh, you can watch the throttle pedal video because we already covered those in that video. So just refer back to the throttle pedal video if you want to learn about how to make those adjustments. So let's get started. Alright, so let's talk for a second about how this clutch mechanism actually works. What we tried to do is we tried to come up with a system that simulates the working mechanics of a real clutch. Now, for those of you that have driven a car with a clutch, you know that every car is different and every clutch is different. They all have different feelings to them. With that said, we tried to give you a close representation of what a real clutch feels like. Now a real clutch tends to have resistance at the top of the stroke and that's when you're first starting to press on it. And once you press further, you get over that resistance and it's a, a nice smooth motion from that point on. Now again, every clutch is different so your experiences may, may differ from others. Alright, so let me demonstrate how this mechanism works. So when you first press on the clutch, you'll get some resistance right at the top and as you can see right here you'll get some resistance right there and as you get over the hump it's a smooth feeling the rest of the way down it's nice and smooth in the back and when you let off it snaps back into place So let's take a couple minutes to go over the components that make up this clutch mechanism. Now the first part is this long extended threaded rod that attaches to the pedal arm and then extends to the back. Now we've made a rectangular block that has another threaded rod that extends outwards on both sides and that's how we attach these two springs. Now the springs are connected to the side plates at the bottom and that's how we achieve the tension that's necessary for this mechanism to function properly. Now the threaded rod has two bearings that we've placed on either side and they both roll on top of these two custom made tracks. Now these two tracks are meant to be equal on both sides so we've attached them together using this bolt in the back here. Now these two tracks are also meant to be adjusted either forwards or backwards and the tracks will slide along these slots in the bottom. And once these four bolts are loose, there's two on each side, you can slide this mechanism forwards or backwards. Now in order to loosen these tracks for adjustment, we need our 5mm Allen wrench and our custom special tool. Now these four bolts have nuts on the end and these nuts are in the on the inner part of these tracks so you'll need a, a wrench small enough or this special tool uh, to fit into this tight space okay so first of all why would you want to adjust these tracks well, let's say for example that you decide that you want to have the pedal arm in a more leaned back position. By moving the pedal arm further back, you are also moving this threaded rod further back. Essentially, you are changing the position of these two bearings on this track. So now the, the feeling of the clutch might be different. So let me demonstrate what I mean by that. I'm going to move the pedal arm further back just to show you what can happen. Okay, so as you can see, with the pedal arm in a more leaned back position, we've also moved the position of this threaded rod. So now these bearings are on top of these bumps in the tracks. 
So basically you are bypassing the resistance that these tracks are designed to give. So how do we fix this? Well, we need to adjust these tracks so that the bearings sit on the front end. Now, this is where you can tweak the feeling a bit. You actually don't have to move the tracks at all if you like how it feels now. However, we do suggest that you always have the bearings sit out at the front of the tracks when the pedal is in its resting position. So let's move the tracks. Now, the first thing we need to do is remove the springs from this threaded rod. And the reason we need to do this is because this rod is under a lot of tension from these springs. And if we tried to move the tracks now, it would be next to impossible. So we need to remove the springs. So we need to first remove these two nuts that are holding the springs in place. Now, these two nuts are basically just a safety precaution. They don't actually need to be there. Uh, they're just preventing the springs from coming off the sides of the threaded rod. So let's take them off. I'm going to use my, my ratcheting wrench here. There's one. Got to go the other way. And there's the other one. Okay, so now that we have the two nuts removed, we need to remove the springs. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Uh, what you need to do is keep your hand on top of the mechanism while removing the first spring. And the reason you need to do this is because the other spring will pull down on the other side, and you won't be able to get the first spring off. So, once the first spring is removed, take your other hand and place it on top of the threaded rod just like before. Uh, this is so you can remove the spring on the other side with your other hand. So let's go ahead and take the springs off. There's one. I'm going to keep it on. And there's the other one. So, now we've got both springs removed. Now we can move the track freely. Okay, so now I'm going to take my 5mm Allen wrench and my special tool and loosen these four bolts. Now once the bolts are loose, we can move the track back and forth as needed. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now all of these bolts are loose. So now we can move the track back and forth as we need to. Now you need to keep an eye on where the bearings are resting on the tracks. You need to make sure that the bearings are sitting on the lower part of the track. Now the two ridges on the sides here on these tracks are to prevent the bearings from moving side to side and potentially falling off the tracks. Okay, so I'm going to place the track right there so that we've got plenty of room before we hit the resistance. I think that's probably good. So now I'm going to tighten down the bolts. I'm going to do it by hand here first. And I, I, I really apologize that my hand's in the way. There's really not, not a way for me to prevent that. Okay, so let's go ahead and tighten them down. Now, like other adjustments, these don't need to be incredibly tight. Just make sure that they're snug. Now, again, I know my hand's in the way, and I apologize. All right. So now that track is not going anywhere. Okay, so once you've got the track in the proper position, the process for attaching the springs is basically the opposite of taking them off. What you want to do is you want to place your hand on top of the mechanism, put the first spring on, switch hands, 
and then put the second spring on. Once the second spring is on, you can take your hand off and then put the nuts back on. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, got the first spring on. Switch hands. Put the second spring on. Okay, now I can remove my hands and then put the nuts back on. And I'm going to tighten these a little bit. Now, these don't need to be tight against the springs. You need to make sure that the spring is loose in here. If the spring is not loose in here, it could potentially break from stress going back and forth. So you need to make sure that the spring is loose in this position. Other way. There we go. All right, so now that we have the clutch mechanism adjusted where we want, we have a couple of problems to solve. So let me turn the pedal here and give you a better angle. Now the first problem is that the bump stop needs to be adjusted so that we can get the same travel out of the pedal as we had before we moved the mechanism to the back. Uh, that's an easy adjustment to make and I'm not going to cover it here because we talked about it in the throttle video. Now the second problem has to do with the position of the potentiometer arm. Now when you adjust the pedal arm angle, the potentiometer arm angle also changes. Uh, you need to keep this in mind when making any pedal arm angle adjustments. Always keep an eye on the potentiometer arm angle. Now as I said in the throttle video, it's a good idea to always have the potentiometer arm positioned with a forward angle when the pedal is in its resting position, and that means when you are not pressing on the pedal. Now, having the potentiometer arm at a forward angle gives the potentiometer the best chance for proper movement. So once you've made your pedal arm angle adjustments, you'll need to adjust the angle of this arm as well. Okay guys, that about covers everything for the clutch pedal. Now all these adjustments really aren't that difficult to make. The trick is knowing what adjustments to make and when to make them. And uh, I'll leave that up to you guys. Now before I end the video, I, I wanted to say a, a few words. Um, I'm, I'm very proud to be a part of this community. You know, it's not very often that you find a group of people that are so passionate about what they do. You know, it's, it's very, that's very rare these days. And I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm very grateful for all the words of encouragement that we've received these, these past three years. Uh, it's, it's, it's been one hell of a ride, and I just wanted to say thank you. All right, guys, I, I really hope you enjoyed this video series, and I hope that they, they help you in, when wanting to make adjustments to our pedals. Uh, I've tried to give you guys as much info as possible with, with as many details as possible. Uh, I hope you enjoyed them, and I hope you learned a little something along the way. All right, guys, we'll see you next time.